Got to see Janos and Stefan. I'll surely be curious to know how my conversation with Professor Boxhoff went. But first, let's stop at the inn to see if I've received any mail. <whistles> Stefan Luca is in the parlor. Let's go greet him. Hello, Father Arno. What news? I've just come from Budapest. I saw Professor Boxhoff, and I have to confess that she shares some of your ideas. You see? Are you ready to help me at last? When do we leave for Turkey? I don't think that my superiors would appreciate that initiative. However, I promise that I'll think about it. Mm. Very well. I think I'll have to venture onto the path of the dragon alone. I can see that I haven't convinced you, Father. But I'd still like to ask you something. Sometimes I'm scared, you know, scared of the powers I'm challenging. Of course, I do have my Medal of St. Dimitri, but I'd also like to have your blessing. You should know that, at our hostess's request, I've already blessed the room you're sleeping in. Oh? Well, that is reassuring. Thank you, Father. Number, please. This is Professor Heinrich von Kruger. This is Father Arno Moriani. Hmm. That hypersensitivity might be due to fatigue or to nervous tension. Let's see. You don't have any allergies, do you? No, not at all. Good. Well, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about, but call me if you notice any allergic reactions. Yeah, I noticed they coincided with epidemics of the plague. Masses of people died, they were buried quickly, and sometimes when they were still alive, they tore at themselves while trying to escape their coffins. If they were disinterred, their bodies were found bloodied. In short, they made perfect vampires. Cases of premature burial like that aren't uncommon, you know. Even today, a colleague told me of a pregnant woman who gave birth in her coffin. The poor lady died of suffocation with her child. Decomposition is not a very systematic phenomenon. If the laws of nature permit one out of a hundred bodies to deteriorate more slowly than others, it takes the time to open every grave in the cemetery, and you'll always find one pseudo-vampire. Anyway, why associate the absence of decomposition with vampirism? The phenomenon has, has been observed with many holy figures. For example, Francis Xavier and Teresa of Avila. Decide just two. Explore the archives of your congregation, and you'll find dozens of cases. Decomposition produces gases that can give the cadaver a swollen aspect. The liquid that oozes from corpses is an odd phenomenon, but did you know that the venerable Lebanese monk Charbel Maklouf has sweat liters of blood since his death? Does that mean this holy man is a vampire? <laughs> what a pompous name. What does it refer to? An initiatory journey having to do with vampirism. Professor Irina Boxoff takes it very seriously. Himmel. Esotericism, secret societies, initiatory journeys. What an old-fashioned hodgepodge. But even the greatest minds sometimes go astray. Himmel, esotericism, secret societies, initiatory journeys. What an old-fashioned hodgepodge. 
But even the greatest minds sometimes go astray. Prophecies. <laughs> what exactly does the professor say? Great evil will come forth in Germany in some 15 years. There will be massacres and a new world war. And what is the source of these prophecies? The hidden apocalypse of Thomas the Greater. Ah, yeah, the Kabbalistic version. Do you know it? <laughs> of course. I also amused myself when I was a student with associations of letters. By the virtue of the law of numbers, once in a while, you obviously have to find a combination that makes sense. You think that all of this is just coincidence? Yeah, and that that book can be made to say just about anything. Uh, wait a minute. I'll go get my copy. Good. Let's open it at random to page three, for example, and look for significant words. You'll see that, with a little bit of luck, we're going to discover some wonders. Hey, look, it didn't take me long to find something. I see other words, but I'll leave you the pleasure of the hunt. Should I show you the words you didn't see? Good fishing, huh? But that's as it should be. When you look for just any old thing, you'll find it easily. Now, let's look at the interpretation. Rising sun, 1945. Fire from the sky. I've got a wealth of choices. For example, I can posit that 1945 will be the dawn of a new empire and that its advent will be accompanied by lightning bolts zigzagging through the sky. Or, also, that in 1945, heaven's fire will fall upon the empire of the rising sun, or any old ingenious absurdity that I can dream up. All right, this game is amusing, but sterile. Let's focus our attention on other matters. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Father. A package from the Vatican. It must be Vlad Tepesh's biography that Monsignor Briganti sent me.
Hello, Father Arno. Are you back from Budapest? Yes. I spoke at length with Professor Boxoff. She takes testimony about vampirism very seriously. Age makes many academics lose touch with reality. But tell me, did she show you the manuscript about Vlad Tepesh? It wasn't necessary. I was able to procure a printed edition, which is more than enough for my needs. You know I'm not very interested in esotericism. Vlad was reproached for everything, even for having abjured orthodoxy to convert to Catholicism.